Hi there everyone, we are once again at the Clifton Suspension Bridge. Last time you saw us, we were outdoors, we were underground. Today, we're looking at some archive materials with the archivist, Hannah Little. Hello. Now Hannah, you've got loads of stuff out for us. I don't know how we can possibly get through it all, but before there was a Clifton Suspension Bridge, there was no bridge and it required an act of parliament for there to be one and you've got a copy of that right here. Yes, yes I do. It's a very dirty, well-thumbed copy dating from May 1830. So this is, yeah. what, 34 years before the bridge eventually opens? Yes, that's right. It opened in 1864. But this is the beginnings. An act for building a bridge over the River Avon from Clifton in the county of Gloucester to the opposite side of the river in the county of Somerset, 29th of May 1830. You've got the thumbs up, it's all go. Mm. This is a print, and on here you can see this building here. This was known as the Swiss Cottage. That was Brunel's site office, and that was destroyed in 1853 when they ran out of money. So Brunel, the famous engineer who was sort of overseeing the project, he built this special cottage to oversee everything from. This was when hopes were high before all those yeah. hopes got dashed yeah. and they ran out yeah. of money. They and ran out of money, and in 1853, the site office was destroyed. And at that point, I have a suspicion that a lot of the original paperwork was destroyed as well. This is what it looked like when they abandoned the work. So this is from about 1854, so 10 years before they opened the bridge. This is the Clifton side of the gorge, obviously. And there's one of the towers. No, <laughs> no bridge, no deck. Here's that big brick abutment that we went inside in the previous video where the vaults are. Still lots of birds. Even now there are always birds around the towers. Yeah. But at this point it looks like this is what it's going to look like forever. It's going to be this sort of white elephant. This is a sketch. It says July 1839 and they haven't finished the abutments. And crucially it shows the Lee Woods abutment in the tops of the vaults being constructed. So this is the only <laughs> visual record we have from the time proving that the vaults are there until we drilled down and discovered them in 2002. But for um, you guys, you know, looking through all this archival stuff, this was quite exciting to find, to definitely. see. So if, if you've got any sketches like this in your attic or any drawings of bridges, just get in touch because you never know, it might be related to this project. What we do have are these prints. So after the towers had kind of laid dormant for a while, mm -hmm. they finally got their act together and said, we're yeah. going to finish the bridge, we're going to put the chains up, we're going to build the deck, it's going it's to be yeah. a real working yeah. bridge. And here we see it happening. Yeah. So Brunel dies in 1859. Here we have an image. Of course, photography's been invented <laughs> since the abutments have been completed. So we actually now have a photographic record of the construction here. And you can see that they built false work bridge just to lay these heavy wrought iron links from Hungary over and across the gorge. Quite a feat of engineering. Here you can see they've begun to start work on the deck and the photographer would have had to go right up to the top of the tower using old photographic equipment to take that image. So it's amazing that he was able even to just take this image. Well they did get it built and when you build a bridge you've got to have a big opening party don't you? Yeah so this is taken from the roof of the hotel in Clifton and it's December so I think it was a bit foggy and misty and this is a later print that's why there's a crack here in the original glass negative but the actual image dates from 8th of December 1864. So this is the party we can see all the people and like the crowds are gathering and all the VIPs would have been in this grandstand here and we can see the observatory on the hill we still see that today up yeah. there that would have been yeah. a good view. It cost five shillings for a seat up there they had a buffet lunch as well nice. and then at night time they had um, electric lights which everyone was very very excited about but they didn't really work very well oh really and they also had magnesium flares and things like that but i have seen adverts from the time people were buying fireworks and letting them off in the crowd and we've got one account of somebody having his whiskers singed off in the celebrations so <laughs> There were yeah. tickets to come and see this event. There were. So these are spare tickets, as it were. Banquet tickets for a lady. Banquet at the Victoria Rooms at 4.30 o'clock precisely in celebration of the opening of the bridge on that day. These are Victorian images of the bridge. This is nice because it's actually dated to 1866, so it's a nice albumen print of the bridge. So this is just two years yeah. after it's opened. It doesn't look that different, does it? No, it hasn't changed. We've still got all the same original wrought iron work. Originally, the chains were painted chocolate brown, and then they were a red colour. I can actually show you a bolt with the old red oxide paint on. There's the bolt with previous colour on it. 
Yeah, so this red paint has actually got lead in it and it's poisonous. But you can see the more recent layers of the whitish grey paint on top. Hang on, shouldn't this bolt be in the bridge somewhere? It will have been replaced with a steel one. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> I was a bit worried there for a minute. Also, in our previous video, you might remember we were like in the vault and we saw all those stalactites from the ceiling. Have a look at this. Hannah got us one of these as well. That's yeah. what they look like up close. Yeah. And Laura told us they're called duck straw and you can see they've got like holes going yeah. through them. There's a hole at the top. Yeah, they're quite delicate. Even to this day, the Clifton Suspension Bridge has a toll to cross. Mm -hmm. You pay with a coin or you can prepay or you can go contactless now. But before they had that, they had all sorts of other things. And we're going to show you some tokens and tickets that have been used. These mark the beginnings of decimalisation. So we've gone from two pence to one P and from five pence to two P and from one shilling to five P. I bet you love all this stuff, you archivists. <laughs> yes. Love it. <laughs> These are the toll tokens that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. That's... 20 tokens cost you 50p, and they're just like little brass, and they've got a little logo of the Clifton Suspension Bridge Trust on Love it. it. We've also got older tickets. It's called a clearance ticket, and it's for one horse drawing a carriage. We've got an early motor car ticket. So this is um, like motor cars are such a novelty that you get a motor yeah, car ticket. Yeah, we also have oxen and sheep tickets. So how did the sheep pay the money to the tollmaster? Like, how does a sheep hold a coin? I don't I know. It's, it's a mystery. This is a real mystery. If anyone <laughs> wants to research it for me, you can. All right. You can. We could spend all day talking about tickets. We could. It, it's beginning to feel like we might. <laughs> but but <laughs> but I actually quite enjoy this. Tell me about what this is and why you've got this. We've been knocking down the old 1958 toll houses to build new ones. And this is what the workmen found the other day. And basically, it's just torn up tickets that people have dropped on the floor. They probably date from the 50s and 60s. I am interested in these because we're living in a, a world where you don't have paper or tokens. You just yeah. have a card that beeps. Ordinary, everyday, ephemeral objects that people love. chucked away that we no longer have. Well, we love that <laughs> stuff here on Objectivity. We have quite a lot of souvenirs. This is called a peep egg. This is an egg made for peeping. So it's hand painted and it says a present from Clifton. So this is a souvenir probably dating from the 1840s. It's made of alabaster stone, basically because it's quite a nice translucent stone that lets the light in. I'm now going to peep in the egg. It's got like a sort of a clear lens on top. And when you look inside, there's like a little rotating device that I'm able to turn with this blue handle on the side. So there's an image of the Clifton Suspension Bridge, and then I can turn it to a new image. What is that? Vivian Terrace. Clifton, some kind of building. And then you can turn <laughs> to like a third side. It looks like some kind of like rock garden. They're yeah. like a mineral garden, which is all very bright and colorful. And I'm back where I started at the bridge. What else have you got here? Yeah, this is a bit Victorian novelty gift. Now, it would have been common to buy people a cider or a beer mug to celebrate their birthday or getting married or something like this. This was bought for Thomas Simmons, whoever he was, from Newham. And it has a lovely transfer print of the Clifton Suspension Bridge on it. You know, these kind of images were mass produced and printed on chamber pots, mugs, plates. And here we have a novelty mug, which sort of shows a little bit of Victorian humour. When you would have been having your drink, suddenly a little frog would pop up. And when you finish your cider all together, there's like a little gag at the bottom. So it shows a child smoking and reading the newspaper. <laughs> Back then, quite the gag. Yeah. Can we go downstairs and see the workshop? Yes. Yeah. Let's all right. Go. Martin, is it? Yeah. Martin, yeah. nice to meet you. Okay, you got it? I got it. Oh, all right. Does this actually get used? Is this like a yeah. tool or is this like a museum piece now? No, it's, it's actually used for taking the covers off. All the caps on the bridge, Yeah. As you see along the links, yeah. that's used for taking them off. What, just one one of you will walk out with this and latch it on and then start? No, one would hold it and one would hit it with a sledgehammer. You hit it with a sledgehammer? Yeah. That's, uh, I'm not struggling with the weight at all. Ugh. Gosh, that's a that's a big that's a big tool. All right, you can have it back now. <laughs> You're right. I'll let you carry it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, this would be used by people who were walking along the chains if they weren't feeling particularly confident. You could just put this down in between the links, and you could walk along like kind of like a kind of like a rolling walking stick. Does this still get used, or is this now just a no? Just a museum piece now, yeah. Just a museum piece. Do you walk on the chains still? Yeah. How many, like, how often do you have to walk on the chains? Not very often at all now. It's um, only if the cradles get stuck. 
the other big jaw we had. You would have attached that to the cradle. Ah. And you would have attached the cradle right way across the bridge. And would the cradle have people in it or would the people get out before you did the ratcheting? It depends. Right. It depended at the time how far you wanted to take it. Oh, they don't build tools like this anymore, do they? Super. You got it. When you look at the bridge and how they've built it and what they did all those years ago, do you look at that and think, oh gosh, or do you think, gosh, they're amazing, those people? To me, it's always like a problem solver, isn't it? Nobody knows how a lot of that got put together. So when we got to take it apart, that's, that's where the fun is, because you've got to solve the problem on how to take it apart and how to put it back together. <laughs> What's that? That must be... That must be like 25, yeah, 25 kilos. <laughs> so imagine like going out over the gorge and trying oh. to put that in place originally. <laughs> Crazy. You know, with no health and safety, just building it. When you look at the bridge, you just, it's like an abstract thing. But then when you hold just a tiny, tiny piece of it and you feel how heavy that is yeah. and all of that is suspended above that gorge. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing the amount of weight that's just hanging there over that void. <laughs> Look at this, this is proper Indiana Jones, this is. The Indiana Jones probably doesn't need the handles or the hard hat. I can't help noticing there's a door here. There's a door here now, <laughs> yes. Uh, so this was, you knocked through a door after it was discovered, obviously. That's right. Oh, well done. Okay. All right, here we go. We're in. Wow. 